Hey everybody, Sandy here, AK Montolio. We are back for another Vintage League, and we're doing a fun one today. We're going back circa 2017, and we're playing some Ravager Shops. Got a few updates in this list, uh, mainly Patchwork Automaton is the card that you you wouldn't have seen back in 2017, or Ursa Saga for that matter. And, I mean, essentially this deck is the exact same thing that I played back at Champs in 2017, uh, actually, I didn't play this version at Champs, but I did at the Star City Games Power 9 series, uh, where I have the transformational board where we go into the four rods and chiefs to be able to uh, supplement the loss of the Overseers and the Ravagers. But uh, yeah, we're going to see how well this holds up. I, I think Aggro Shops a little bit on the outs uh, over the last uh, number of months anyways, as Golo Shops has moved into the forefront of those shop strategies, but I still think it could be viable in a good deck, so let's see how we do today, guys. Please hit the like and subscribe button, and we'll see you in round one. Okay, welcome everybody, it's Andy here, AK Montolio, we're back for round one of our Vintage League on Ravager Shops today. And it has been a hot minute since I've played Ravager Shops. So, I'm not crazy about this hand. I think we can just do better. This hand itself is not amazing, but we're going to keep it. What do we want to do here? I think we'll probably put the inspector away, right? I think we do turn one. Overseer with Stone Coil. Yeah, I'm going to put the Inspector away. A little bit rusty on my workshops. It's been a while. Too bad we don't have the aforementioned card in hand. That would be pretty good. I miss these little guys. They make me happy seeing them. For those of you who are unaware, this was an integral part of winning Vintage North America Champs in 2017. We could play around Mind Break Trap here, but I think what I want to do is I want my opponent to feel threatened by what's coming with the workshop here and letting the Overseer resolve as a result of that. And last turn. Stone Claw Serpent can block Sphinx of the Steel one. Because it has protection from multicolored. Oh, this is one of the problems when you play workshops and you don't have spheres, right? Mm, it's pretty good. I think we just wasteland here. If we find another land here, that would be good. Hmm, do I want to get in here? What happens if we trade? I, I don't really like trading a lot here. But maybe my I should be attacking. Maybe next turn I'll do it. Ooh, Black Lotus. Jeez, that's a good one. Hopefully they don't wheel me here. We're looking for land. Just going to get in here. If they want to trade, I think I'm okay with that. Yeah. Get in for one trample and pass turn. Why I decided to do it now is because the Black Lotus puts me in a far worse position if they have a wheel. They can cast it. It's a lot of mana. I do need some help here. Well, that's going to help out quite a bit. I 
Gonna do a pump now that I have a friend in in queue here with the second steel overseer. I will pump that up and then I will start attacking with the 4-4 four, four and use the other overseer to start pumping up my guys. Okay. Thank goodness I don't have a saga there. We gotta get our game going here fast. It's a good one. Okay, I guess we're... I mean, the constructs are pretty good here, but uh, I definitely like a lodestone golem a lot more than the, the constructs, so we're going to see if we can get them in. It's a lot of damage. We can do lethal. Hopefully there's not a tinker and a vault key. Oh, they just have it. Okay. Very nice. All right. I was feeling pretty good there, but I mean, they know they drew it off the top, right? It's not a high probability that that will happen. Okay. So what do we want to do here post board? So I think the first thing that comes out is steel overseer does not look great in this type of a position. And I also think in general, Ravager is not very good. That said, Ravager probably is better than Ballista. We'll do a split. We'll do a split. Let's try this out. This looks like a really nice hand. I know. Let's see if this resolves. And it does. So my hope is, is that we will be able to set up a play where we can get uh, get their mocks. Yep. All right. That's great for me. Well, wish I could cast that inspector, but we're just going to cast a second sphere here. And then the beatdown is on, guys. Look at that. Our hand is awkward because. We're not able to deploy more than the Sears, but that's okay. Taking a bit of a gamble here. They're going to expose their land here to play with a Mox. They've got eight cards in hand. They've just conceded. They're not even doing it. Like, they've seen that I have the Null Rod here. Okay. Now I am going to come in. I, I probably... It's hard to know what's better, the Ravager or the Ballista in these type of situations. Because if, the question that you ask yourself is what if the Null Rod is not in play? What would I prefer, a Ravager or a Ballista? And I think Ballista has the best closing power of the two. Like, you know, I could get my opponent down low in life. This is one of the few ways that I can reach my opponent. So, I don't think we want to cage. Let's do this. Excuse me. <coughs> I 
This hand is okay. We need to draw another land, but I think I'm just going to put the chief, chief away. I am going to keep this, though. What becomes really awkward, though, is if my opponent forces my uh, inspector. We just lose our lotus, but that's the world we're living in. We've got some tools, though. See if this gets the force. I mean, it has to be fairly terrifying for my opponent to see that, but. So how do I want to do this? Do I want to chow us at one? Or do I want to chow us at zero? I probably want it at zero. This is dangerous doing this, it this way, but I, I am going to do it. And I'm sandbagging the chalice last. Because I think the chalice could be extremely powerful here. My opponent might be prompted to force this. And then the chalice resolves and all of a sudden my opponent's forced to play a little bit more fair. Now, if they've got... Uh, Just we'll make this a zero. We'll just throw that down. And uh, we'll see. All right. It was a strong turn from us. Hercules recall makes us look a whole bunch worse, but I mean, it is what it is. I cannot stop that. I'm going to love the sphere there. Or a three ball. Cannot wasteland them. Wouldn't mind it an all rod there. We're looking for the control pieces here, I think. Uh oh. I cannot bode well for me. Play a Lotus. Okay, Sphinx is not bad. I mean, I, I just can only presume that they've gotten... Uh, well, there's two things they could do. They're struggling, so they maybe got an Ancestral Recall here. But it's also possible that they Hercules Recall me as well. This is one-off... No, this is lethal next turn. So let's hope it's Ancestral. Okay. All right, so that's a bit scary. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was worried about was a, just a time walk there, but what am I supposed to do, right? Why? I mean, there's a number of things that just go absolutely sideways here with a full mitt like that. Oh, they got Lotus again. Jeez. 
Okay, I'm no longer feeling good here. The Lotus really, I think, changes the math somewhat, but we'll see. Breach, yep, breach is not good for me. Hopefully they're just time walking here. Yep. Are they twisting again? Just trying to go for the win right now. All right, well. Sad to see the mocks come down there. Another mocks, okay. Top, okay. Would have been nice to draw into one of those mind break traps in this situation, but interesting. They just cracked their top. I think they should have spun their top and then flipped it. Um, I think that might have been an error on their part, but I guess maybe what they were trying to do is being able to cast it and be able to uh, untap the vault. I guess flipping the top makes sense that way, so perhaps my bad. I, I don't know if they had any more mana in their hand that they could use. They did play their land for the turn there, so... Anyways, we were about to untap and kill them there, um, as well as play a Null Rod, amongst many, many other things there because of the presence of the Inspector. So, nice win for Rav Shops. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please hit the like and subscribe button. We'll see you for round two. Okay, guys, here we are for round two, our Vintage League with Ravager Shops. We won the die roll. MTG Goldfish says, my opponent has one result and it is with Dredge. And we're definitely not playing against Dredge. We're seeing Allurus here. So I do like this hand. Um, I think we just want to get an Overseer into play in a sphere, right? Like, whatever Lurus is doing over there is probably going to be impacted pretty significantly by a sphere, I would suspect. Okay, so they have a force. We got rid of a time walk, which is pretty good for us. Let's see what my opponent can do over there. Bobble. So this is likely Twinless Twins. Uh, Jeskai Breach deck is my guess. Hopefully they don't get our Overseer. Our overseer, I think, is pretty important here. Time Walk is gone. It's going to be our Dash Dragovan. Or an Arcanist. It could be an Arcanist as well. Yep. Okay. Let's see if I can get this down on the Mox Ruby. Then I'm going to actually wasteland my opponent here first to take any potential of days away. Then I'm going to cast the Ravager, which should resolve. And I'm not going to mess around. I'm just going to get this going here right now. So that was a pretty good turn from us. My opponent currently has no mana. Now, a source to plowshares changes things here significantly. Yeah, this is like a time walk for me. That was a good draw. Okay, so what do we want to do here? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack in with these two, and I am not going to pump, no, actually maybe I should, I was going to say, see, the reason I was not going to do that was I was going to, 
inhibit my opponent from attacking in here, but the reality is they have no mana with the sphere in play, so I'm not worried about double recursion with the Arcanist. But it's okay. We gave up a little bit of damage. Next turn, we're going to be coming in for an awful lot. So they did actually find a land here. So we did bleed a little bit too damage there. See if they want to force this, if they have one. I don't think they do. How much are we coming in here for? Um, not enough. Not enough. I could sacrifice this and this. That would be 5, 9, 10. It would be five, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and that shuts their fetch off. I kind of like that, to be honest. My math is not wrong here, right? Three, seven, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. I actually can kill them here if they don't block, but uh, I'm not going to come off the sphere here because of the presence of swords. Yeah, they're blocking. Okay. I still could have put them to one, but there, I, there's no need to do it. So Nulrod seems like a reasonable thing to be doing against their deck. They do have a fair amount of fast mana in their deck. Let's try something like this, maybe. Once again, maybe I just do my split. Let's try something like this, guys. Like this, the Null Rod really hurts the breach component of the my opponent's deck. I could play Graph Digger's Cage for the uh, Dread Horde. It is something to think about. Maybe I put in a cage and what do we side out here? Maybe one of these. The reason the cage is somewhat viable in this position is because we have an Urza Saga. It's a nice looking hand here. Um, I'm going to get rid of the chief here. Hmm, interesting. So, as you can see, there's a multitude of different things to do here for us, and they all have their pros and cons. The number one thing that I want to do is the Sphere of Resistance. I could go Chief of the Foundry, play Sphere of Resistance. If the Sphere resolves, then I'll feel very good about that sequence, because obviously it's a very realistic chance that my opponent is going to untap and wasteland me, and then we're all of a sudden in a position where we're not able to do a lot. Um, getting the Foundry Inspector Counterspelled leaves me with absolutely no other play. I have to pass turn, which is bad news, Brown. All of that said, I think the patchwork is probably what I'm going to lead on here because of that. Because one, it's not easy to kill. And number two, 
Um, I will grow it here, and uh, if the sphere resolves, then I'm still in good shape here. So my opponent cannot STP this in response. Okay, they did have to use the force. Let's see if they ways land us now. Bobble, okay. Mm -hmm. They're bobbling themselves. Nope. I wonder if it's better to bobble uh, themselves there. Dreadhorde, okay, Dreadhorde's a good one. Love a sphere here. Raptor, solid. They can gush if they want. I'm, I'm taking a gamble. Ravager resolves here. This is really nice for me. Because uh, STP can be circumvented. I mean, this guy is... This little... Uh, Guy here is pretty good here, this patchwork. It, it's going to take a full turn sequence if my opponent's lucky, lucky to be able to kill it. Yeah, I mean, my opponent must not have land. Now, if there's a tabernacle or something here, this is uh, that's obviously vicious. Yeah, that's vicious, man. I can't believe my opponent sided that in. So I think we can pretty much scoop him up here. Uh, the reason being is that uh, I can't... Uh, the Dread Horde just does its thing there. I guess if I find a Wasteland, it's not bad. Okay. No point in casting the Revoker here. I think that's likely inexperience from my opponent siding that in against us. I mean, it, it just was devastating there for sure. But, uh, you know, that's it's, it's a little bit weird. Hmm. Well. Keep passing here. The problem is they have that shattering screen. Maybe it's oak. Maybe I should be just casting into it. To be honest with you, I, I was thinking more like protecting my spells, but I, I I'm not going to be able to play around that forever. The ancestral. I'm probably just going to concede. Yeah, I don't think I played that optimally. Okay. Um... I think what I'm doing here is fine. Okay, I mean, you know, it's pretty good. This Trinisphere resolves, my goodness.
No, I feel like they have a force, but I'm going to do it anyways. I mean, you, you got to, they have to, you have to make them have it. And they didn't. Okay. They just wasteland me here. Yep. Let's hope we find a land here. I mean, we're really off to the races if we do. Oh, boy. That's awful. Mm -hmm. There it is. Okay, I think I have what I have to do, despite not optimal. I, I, I'm going to play this out to ensure if I get wastelanded the following turn that I'm not blowing myself up doing it. Because that would suck if I just played the patchwork out, got wastelanded again, and then I couldn't get the, the uh, cast any more spells. Okay, I've been given a a blessing here. My opponent has not found a second land. And a wasteland here would be amazing for us or any creature. Okay. I might just go all in on this Ravager here. Let's let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six. That makes this a nine. And anything we cast, yeah, I see no reason not to do that. This is really aggressive, but I realize, guys. But my opponent has to rip two back-to-back -back lands, and they have to be able to deal with the patchwork. It's not going to be easy for them. I guess, tr I guess one of the mistakes I just made here is I did just play into a tabernacle. I probably shouldn't have done that in hindsight. They've just conceded, but uh, that that probably was a mistake, given I know that my opponent keeps Tabernacle in against me. Um, so I shouldn't have done that, but regardless, guys, we got the victory, and we're not punished, and please hit the like and subscribe button, and we're going to see you next round. Hey, everybody. Here we are for round three of our Vintage League. This is a nice-looking hand. Um... We're going to keep this one. Very hard to ship this one back. If we run into bazaars, it could be a bit awkward. Uh, my opponent, traditionally, I know them as a rug player, but they have been playing some hollow vine. Yeah, so here's an example of this could be a tough spot for us, but uh, one of our best cards against them is Trinisphere. Okay, so this is Hogak vine. So let's just hope they don't have an explosive start here. Just pass turn. Okay, so they do have the hollow one, unfortunately. Okay, so we got a lot going on here. Um, what is awkward for us is if we get hit with Force of Vigor, but we're just not even, yeah, they're just completely like F6 here. get this in as a this one one and a one one this is going to cost two to put in Okay, very nice start for us. Now, 
they can build towards a Hogak here, but hopefully I will be able to get my, my stuff out of range here. What becomes a problem is if they're on cradles, and like if the, the canister list, like the, the canister plays cradles with blood gas, whereas I don't in my, my Hogak list, like my cradle line list does not have any of the ghasts at all. My point being is they could get out from underneath this Trinosphere, whereas traditional uh, John Hogak fine would have a lot of trouble around that. Okay, so we actually are reasonably ill-prepared in this matchup. Like, I don't really like Graft Digger's Cage that much, to be honest. Chalice could be okay on one. But since I'm siding these in, I'm not crazy about it. <sighs> Thorn is not really where I want to be. My stone coils are great. This gets vines and blood gas. The problem is, is that on the draw, it's not nearly as good. I'm going to side out a couple Sears here, guys. On the draw, I think it's worth doing because I can get stuck under my own stuff here, whereas when I'm on the play, I'm the one that's more likely dictating the, the terms. This hand is not good enough. Very force of vigorable. Much better. Try that out. Okay, that's good. This is definitely good good news for me that they're playing this way. Now, look. Force of Vigor is definitely a thing that can blow me out of the water here, but I don't have a lot of choice, right? I'm going to play the Inspector in the cage here, and I just don't think my opponent is going to have the wherewithal to be able to risk Force of Vigoring if they have it. I don't want them to Vigor, but I feel like the Snake is much higher value here. Perfect. So this means they have a Bazaar, unfortunately. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gone after the cage. Oh, wow. Okay. All right, so maybe I was better to do the snake there, but that's all right. Okay, Stitcher. So next turn, Hogak is going to be tough. They're down to one card here. Hmm, it's pretty good. I think we get our snake in. Now, Hogak is, is not fun for us if they have it here, but Besaju is also a thing they could do here. This feels like a Besaju. Yep. Okay, they don't have Hogak. We need some help here. I don't dislike our spot. Fantastic. Then we can pump up the following turn by paying, and we have our Overseer, and that can wipe up their board really quickly, given the opportunity. Now, a Collector Roof would be a bummer. 
That would probably just end the game right there, but. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the problem I'm faced with here is that I, in order to get two of them away from a Hogak here, I lose my Ballista, and I don't think that's worth it. I can get rid of one of these guys. Like, I could kill the supplier, but I, I'm not really keen to do that in case I knock them into a Hogak. So I'm going to wait a, a turn here, and I can get their entire board here. Just burning me and just okay they're gaining a couple life okay yep we just got to fade one more turn here yeah we got to hope Okay, lucky. I'm taking a couple damage. Oh, they didn't attack. Okay. I still don't like doing it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a construct here and uh, start getting my beat, beat down going here. Like if a whole guy comes down, I'm in a bad spot and I do acknowledge that. And I am playing greedy trying to control this ballista. But maybe that is just okay. Yeah. And, and, and if by them doing this, if they hit a Hogak here, they did. So this is actually going to show what I'm going to do because I am going to blow up their board here. Hmm. Four or five. I can kill every single creature they have, but I lose my Ballista. Against my better judgment, I, I am choosing to go giving up a significant body in the uh, construct here to do this. I, I think just keeping them off a of Hogak the best I can is just worth it. Yep. Gain two life. I, I know. They're going to eat their dryad arbor. Okay, do they have something in hand here? They're just gaining life. Okay. So, and I realize I'm giving them more life to gain here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill the two Deathrite Shamans. And I'm going to hope that they can't hard cast anything. And if they do, I, on the stack, I will kill the Stitcher Supplier. So it's a little bit of a delicate situation here. And if they want to gain life, all the better. Yep. So there it goes. We're going to do the same thing here. And I, I hope to God they gain two life. This is good for me, right? Like, the fact that they're doing this takes away the ability to Hogak and allows me to pump my Blist off next turn. 
and kill the Stitcher. I, I don't like that line they just took, but... Interesting, okay. Make the construct here. Like maybe they have a vigor, I don't know. I'm just getting going with my plan here. Not even gonna let it sit around here. No reason. Got a couple of bazaars there. Glad I didn't let them have that. That was very fortuitous. All right, guys. Steel Overseer and Ballista. It's been a while since I've seen the potency of that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Feel free to leave any comments, and we'll see you next round. Okay, hey everybody, it's Andy here at Game One Soli. We're back for round four of our Vintage League. We're going to mulligan this one. Unfortunately, we did not win the die roll. My opponent uh, does not really have any results other than that they are a just guy player in Legacy. I think this is a worthwhile keep. What do I want to put back here? Like, I kind of like the Black Lotus for being able to get a turn one going. But the Saga is far more effective if I'm able to strip mine and just play the Saga out, right? But I can get these things out on a turn one. Like, maybe I put the strip mine away. I think it has to be the Lotus here. Can I put one of them? Hmm. I really highly value, if, especially if I'm playing against something that's um, got removal in it, like Just Guy. I don't know that that's what they're playing, but the turn one is really powerful. I think I'm just going to put the strip mine away here against my better judgment. This gives me a really nice turn one play, and I can follow up with the Saga line. Okay, so this is Hogak Vine, with all likelihood. Well, this changes how we're going to approach things here. I'm going to attempt to get this into play. Look, I can't stop Force of Vigor. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to... I'm going to resolve this first. I want to, I want this to actually, I know that this is resolved. Okay. So it has, now I'm going to play this. And it sucks if I get vigored. My sequencing probably was not great here, guys, to be honest. If they have vigor, it's, it's really awkward, but I think having a lodestone is really strong here. Okay. I, I don't know. And now I've got a nice play with the Saga. Like, what does that mean? What did Foothills pass? Okay. Yeah. I mean, Vigor still gets me pretty damn good here, but what, what's a guy going to do, right? I'm going to play the Automaton because if this resolves, at least I can put the, the Ravager fodder on top of it because it can't be targeted. So if they did have a Vigor, they should have done it before the patchwork hit the table. 
And then next turn I'm going to play the Ballista, and then I'm going to sacrifice my two Moxen with all likelihood. Okay. Oh, Jesus, that was a nice one. Okay. Get this into play, get my guy getting a little bit bigger there, and, uh, I mean, this is very lethal. Yeah. All right, uh, what does that mean? Like, is this Oath? I'm just not sure what this means. I didn't see enough information from my opponent there, but Lodestone could have taken them off the Oath here, like the Brennan 6 Oath decks. I'm going to hedge my bets. I, I do have alarm bells going off, but this is what it is. Maybe I'm just going to bring in a couple, and let's see what we're dealing with here. What do we want to take out? Um, maybe I'll take out a Stone Coil Serpent, and maybe I'll just take out an Inspector. Yeah, let's try that. I I realize I'm watering myself down if they are not, with, not Oath with the Cage. But they're just one of us. I'm hedging a little bit. I have Urza Saga to be able to go and find them. And this is a nice looking hand. Unfortunately, I don't have a sphere, but I mean, left on a cost that this hand can kill pretty quickly. But uh, obviously, if a quick old comes down, this hand does absolutely nothing. I mean, I can start casting ballistas and shooting, but it's not a viable way to win a game. But, you know, our opponent conceded. We never saw what they were. And. That's one of the privileges of doing that, is that uh, we're not really sure how to sideboard against them. Okay. feel like this lightning bolt. I don't think there's an easy way to play around it. I think I'm just going to hedge my bets with the Ballista here for now. Should have six there. We'll see if they have some form of removal. They don't. Yeah, this is great. Okay. The Mox for us was pretty significant here. First things first, I'm going to get this thing down. Give me some options here. If this resolves, it's, I feel good about things. It does resolve. So what do we want to do? I'm going to cast this. Play this. I've already played my workshop here. Let's try this out. Could have played this on Black Lotus. I guess like a Black Lotus into a Shattering Spree is pretty brutal, but uh, <coughs> this could be lethal next turn here. You got to be careful when your opponent has open mana like this. Like if they tap out and cast an Oath here, like it's not the worst for me. If there's a red and six, it's fine. I feel like it's an oath, but let's see. Whoa. That I didn't expect. Okay. Let's get in, right? Yeah, they can't really favorably block here, unfortunately, for them. So this is Rug. I 
I'm gonna take the green source here and I'm gonna put this uh, revoker down on run in six and it sucks if I get wastelanded but yeah. then you know my opponent is getting into a position where they're gonna have to block here maybe I should have just got the second revoker down because I'm beating down but oh wow okay they have a tarmogoyf here Okay, geez, that's a good one. Wasteland. Let's get in, guys. That's all we can do. This puts them to two life. And having their evoker here is pretty big game. Okay. Oh, this is great for me. They're dead. Yeah, this kills them, I think. Unless they have a Vigor. Hmm. I have literally lethal on their upkeep. Well, I have lethal right now. I'm going to put this on Ren. Like, Doc Faden's a thing. Yeah, I mean, we just do it now. There's no reason not to. I didn't I don't like those blocks they did I think they were in trouble there no matter what they did but uh maybe they forgot about the ravager trigger all right guys there you have it a nice clean win against rug for the 2-0 and yeah we're gonna go play for a trophy match which is kind of fun because I've really enjoyed playing this deck today and I hope you guys have too so we'll see you then Hey everybody, it's Andy here, I came on Tolio, and we're back for round five of our Vintage League. We're actually playing for a trophy. Uh, Storm is a player that pops in and out of Vintage, uh, at least on Magic Online, and I know them to typically be a humans player. So, I, I think this is a good hand. I, I wish we were on the play here, it would be a lot better just slamming a Trinisphere, but that's pretty risky in itself because of uh, getting wastelanded, but... Let's see what we're up against here. Okay, Polluted Delta. That is not what I expected. Well, I cannot resist slamming a three ball. And it, it's very awkward if it resolves and we get wastelanded, but if it gets forced, I can live with it. Yeah. So, Sphinx of the Steel Wind. Okay, we don't need to deal with Sphinx now. And next turn we can set up our pretty nice turn. Let's see what ends up happening here. Okay, they do have a mox. Hopefully they can't tinker me here. That would be pretty awful if they could, but... Oh, interesting cavern. Human. So they are playing a brew here. Mentor. Yuck. They've got one card left. What is awkward for me here, guys, is I think we're going to play an Inspector. I wish we had a, a better set of mana than we currently do, but I think I just have to get a Steel Overseer into play here. I 
do I get a sphere? I feel like Overseer is one of the ways that I, I can take over this game. That can beat a mentor. This is a, a tough decision for us, but if we get to untap with the two, like if we're left on a cost at next turn, I think we're we're in pretty good shape. We just have to hope my opponent bricks here. Okay, Time Vault, that's good for me. I mean, obviously Time Vault's a scary card. That goes without saying, but we're going to have some... Uh, some good play here for sure. I will trade with the mentor absolutely given the opportunity. Okay. Because I have so many spheres here, right? Like, one of the things that concerns me about this particular situation is, so what I'm talking about is the Frexian Revoker. Do I put it on the Time Vault or do I put it on the Mox Emerald? I have the ability here to play a Lodestone Golem and two Spheres this turn. And by shutting off their Mox, that means they're not casting any spells. What I'm concerned about is an Urza Saga that lands on this Time Vault. I don't have a wasteland currently right now. So basically what we're weighing out against here is what is their chances of finding the Urza Saga before casting spells? And I think the Saga is probably less. So I think that makes sense to put this on the Mox Emerald to me. And hopefully we don't get punished for this. We're just going to get in with everything we've got here. Okay, my opponent's conceded. Okay, so hard to know what my opponent is on for sure. I mean, I think they're playing Tinker. We saw Sinks of the Steel win. But a pretty fast mentor there. I think th this is a little bit of a hedge doing this, but I think it's fine. Let's try this out. <coughs> I'm not convinced Mind Break Trap is where we need to be here. Vulnerable to Wasteland, but I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, Tinker's the card we don't want to see here, but... Okay, straight into a Sphinx. All right, well, we've got our work cut out for us, guys. It's pretty nice from them. I don't think we can beat this, but it's possible. If, if we go completely unaccosted. Are they just going to force us? 
they're obviously sitting on a force, but I don't think they're too worried about anything I'm doing over here. Now, of note, I'm turning off my own Mox Ruby here, which is not ideal. I just don't see how we beat this thing. And of note, Mind Break Trap didn't do anything last game. I played Mana Crypt into Tinker. So even if we had it, we weren't going to be good there. But I guess, you know, if we can somehow get a, an Urza Saga going here, I guess it's not the worst. We can deploy both of our artifacts next turn, the Null Rod, and then into the Sphere. Swords, okay. That does give me life, which is not the worst. And that's my turn. Vampiric, what does that mean? Just an ancestral, I guess, right? Mm. Yeah, not feeling good here. I mean, this is the type of matchup that is... Um, very challenging because they can cast their spells at instant speed and uh you know set up a tinker and like sphinx is a tough one to beat now with that said we have four snakes in our deck and they can block the sphinx of the steel one cleanly so that is a possibility for us of note an option is we find a chief off the top that we can bring a snake into play off of our Urza Saga. Just something to think about. We're, we're not completely cold to this card, but it's pretty bad. But constructs are one of the ways that we can. This just has to be an ancestral, right? Yeah. But we are running out of time here. Snake? Let's find a snake. We did not find a snake. Well, we just got to play to our outs here, right? We're in a bad spot. We need a, we need to peel a snake off the top of our library next turn to have any chance. Preordain. Lots of cantrips here. I mean, it, what's questionable for me is how good is Null Rod? I really don't know. We're already very dead, so we have to try and get our stuff going here. I don't think it benefits us. To make another construct here. Oh, guys. And my opponent has tapped out. Uh, none of this matters. Can make a 6 6. 
which will kill it. This puts me to one. And eight, eight. So if they have a swords, I mean, it's a little rough for me. Well, it's very rough for me if they have a swords. Just have to hope they don't. This can get through. My opponent has an awful lot of life. And this will keep me alive for another turn, but I'm just dead if they have the swords anyways, because they have way too much life. So let's just hope they don't. Or a Herx works too. Oh, this will put them into a swords though. Yeah, I guess a Chalice at one. Very nice. No, Hercules recall. Okay. Yep. Okay. So we know they have Herks now. How good is this plan? Can I go back to my aggro plan? I don't think so. I think this time, though, I am going to get a cage. Just a miscellaneous cage. Maybe just take out a Ravager here. Let's try this out, guys. I think this is where I want to be. That one won't do. This one's not very good either. But I'm going to keep this one. I guess my question is, is what if the Null Rod gets countered? How good is the second Null Rod? Like, probably just better than Chief, right? For now. See if we can get the sphere in. Hopefully this resolves. This is pretty big. And let's see how broken their hand is. Basic. Good. Keep going. Well, here's the big gambit. Is did this no are we gonna resolve our null rod? And this is big game. Nice. Now we need to find land off the top. They're missed. I guess we just make constructs, right, guys? I think we do. Just try and close this out as fast as we can. And then just hope they miss. Oh, right on. There you go, guys. We got a concession there. Um, we were going to be having some pretty serious constructs there, two five fives. 
And, uh, you know, who knows if we would have drawn another man off the top, but uh, we were going to close that game out very quickly. So uh, my opponent did say uh, that they'd had the turn one tinker, but couldn't get through my, my sphere. And of course, the null rods were very big there. So yeah, guys, I mean, what can I say? It's been a really long time since I've played workshops and certainly of the aggro variety. And this deck actually felt really good. So uh, I definitely would recommend taking it for a spin if you enjoy playing uh, uh, aggro shops. Once again, thanks for hanging out, guys. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Feel free to leave any comments, and we're going to see you next time.